at this stage it feels like we've been in lockdown for oh who knows a couple of years possibly well in reality it's only been about one and a half months but nonetheless the kids are starting to run through just about everything we've had to entertain them with in the house and that's including catching mice and trying to train them that was a bad idea so we've fallen back on things that kept them going all those years ago when they were slightly smaller and possibly more entertaining, including something called hammer beads. If you know these beads, they're essentially little round tubes that you can put on a pegboard, make a pretty shape with, iron them, and uh, then they stick together as they melt and make pretty pictures. So when my good lady ordered a packet of these hammer beads, imagine her disappointment when they turned out to be not the standard sized ones, which are midi sized, but the small ones, which are mini sized. The difference being the regular ones are approximately five millimeters in diameter. And these little horrors are about two millimeters in diameter, which is not the end of the world. But the problem was we didn't have any pegboards. Now without pegboards you're just not doing anything at all. It just does not work. You have to have these boards to secure the beads in place. So uh, what were we to do? Of course this is where dad comes in since he has a CAD, B, an SLA printer which can print at extremely high resolution and see more time on his hands due to coronavirus so i sat down and designed some pegboards and it wasn't as simple as i initially thought it did take some fiddling and some test runs but as you can see the results finally came through and they're absolutely marvelous and the best part is that they cost me about 40p each to print or something like that and the ankle biters were kept entertained and thought they had a very cool dad so that's an unqualified success as far as I'm concerned. What's really staggering about this are the dimensions involved. Each one of these pins at their base are 0.9 millimeters in diameter and at their tip 0.247 millimeters in diameter. And the height of each pin is two millimeters. These are so small and yet the print I used handles them without any problem. And that's because the technology this printer uses is called stereolithography and uh, that allows for printing details so fine the feature size i.e. the smallest possible size or anything that you could print with it is 47 microns. To give you an idea the width of a human hair is approximately 60 to 150 microns. So it can print details finer than a human hair. And I designed the board in Fusion 360, which is something I use for most of my designs that will involve sort of engineering style design work. And uh, it's very straightforward. It's just a matter of figuring out how big I wanted my pin to be and then creating arrays, uh, repeating rows of these pins. Essentially all I've done is created one row and then repeated it along its length and that's how the board has been filled out. It was a relatively simple job to design and it took some thinking though because the beads are nominally two millimeters wide but uh, as it turned out, they do vary in diameter, especially if they've been squished. There might be 1.8 millimeters wide in the squished bit and 2.2 millimeters wide on the unsquished bit. So to compensate for that, I allowed a gap of eventually 2.3 millimeters, which proved to be the sweet spot. If they're too far apart when you iron them, then the plastic won't melt sufficiently to fuse them together. If they're too close together, then as you press them down on the board, the slightest movement will make them all jump off because they're essentially all shoved together and are under tension and just waiting for something to get set them free. So it was a matter of experimentation. And as I say, I settled on a distance of 2.3 millimeters between each pin and each pin being two millimeters tall and 0.9 millimeters at the base, tapered upwards at approximately three degrees. If you've enjoyed this video, then do the YouTube thing.